Good morning, Laura. Here's your machine, the Breville Barista Express BES870. As you saw in the photos, it's in good condition. For a used machine, it does have the normal wear and tear on the front, lots of scratches from the cup going in and out, um, but not too much. So a, bit, a few scratches here on the, on the front side as well. Nothing too bad, if I'm being honest. Um, and I've just finished doing the, the service on this last night, so full clean, big scale. Um, testing pressure, testing leaks, everything seems to be normal. I even calibrated the grinder for you, so now we'll make a coffee on it. Uh, we'll make a latte, my morning latte. Um, and uh, maybe teach you a thing or two about coffee making. So, uh, when you turn on the machine, it usually takes five minutes to warm up. It'll take a minute to reach temperature. Uh, but sorry, it'll take about 10, 10 to 20 minutes to warm up if you leave it on and pa let it passively warm up. So your top tray will be slightly warm, so you can put your cups on it as well. Uh, and your hand will be warm as well. But if you want to warm it up properly and quickly, I recommend running a blank shot. So in this case, I've got my cup. I'll put it underneath so that the cup can get nice and hot as well with that water. The handle is empty. I'll press, uh, press the double button, let it run. This will warm things up pretty quickly. Mainly the handle and the cup are what's getting warmed up. This also so sort of acts like a uh, cleaning cycle where it just flushes any coffee oils or grounds that are stuck in the group head or in the pipes. So I like to do it every time. Um, once that's done, you can do this once or twice, it's up to you. Once that's done, just take out the, the port filter, drain it properly, grab a tissue, and dry it thoroughly. So we're using, your machine comes with four baskets, we're using the double basket here. This will take 18 grams of ground coffee, freshly ground coffee. Um, I'll be using my scale to measure the input, so how much we grind, as well as the output, how much coffee we get. Um, I'll put the grind size at number four, um, just by the looks of it, it seems to be the right amount, sorry, it seems to be the right texture, but there's only one way to find out and that's by making coffee. That's the only way to find out if we have the correct grind size. So it's at number four now, we'll try that now. Uh, we'll try 12 o'clock position on the grind amount. Uh, so the grind size will control here on the left, it'll control how fine or coarse the coffee is, the grind amount will just dictate how long the grinder will run for. Um, uh, and typically I'll start at 12 o'clock and then adjust it from there. And then I'm going to keep the filter size on single. Um, rather than putting on double, I'll put it on single and do it twice. Um, this way I can prevent any spillage and keep things nice and neat. So, 4 o'clock, uh, sorry, um, 12 o'clock and grind size number 4. dose, take it out and measure, that's 9.4, not too bad, I'll dial it back to 1 o'clock back, so this is 11 o'clock now, after you grind your first dose, slightly press it with a tamper to compact it and make way for the next batch. Filling it with some more water. So this is the second dose. Let's have a look see. Yeah, that's 18 grams, 17.9. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. 
So I'll keep it here on the 11 o'clock for you to test. So when you make coffee, just use the settings that I'm using here. Unless it's wildly wrong, uh, when we make the coffee, I think I'll keep the settings as is and let you experiment. Reason being, uh, each machine is the, each each sorry um, type of bean will brew differently, and each brand of beans will brew differently. Uh, so it's, it's um, a waste of time for me to adjust it very to very very fine settings um, when you'll be probably using different brand of beans when you get it. Um, so I'll be using the settings now. Uh, when you tamp. Make sure you distribute the coffee before you press, so distribute them with your finger, so that once you come to press the coffee with the tamper, you're pressing on an even surface, and so the pressure around the coffee is even. And you'll notice that the silver part on the tamper disappears. So this is the depth of the tamper that it goes to. This is the, temp this is the depth that the tamper goes to if you have the correct amount of coffee. Um, we have 18 grams, we know this is the correct amount of coffee, and so it sits nice and flush with the edge of the um, the basket. Make sure it's even and flat all around, um, and clean any uh, coffee on the rim here, and then lock it in all the way. You can lock it in the middle, that's fine, uh, but if you ever notice it slipping out, that just means that you're not, you haven't locked it enough. So you can put it in the middle and see what happens. Um, and if you if it slips in the middle, then I guess next time just push it all the way to the right. Um, right, so 18 grams in. We want to double that 18 grams in terms of um, coffee grams. We want to double it in terms of espresso. So um, 18 in, 36 out is the is the recipe for espresso usually. Um, you don't usually have to follow the numbers to the dot. Um, after all, it is a preference. If if it tastes good at 50 grams or 30 grams, do whatever it makes um, it tastes good for you. Uh, but just for um, standardization, I'm just going to do a 2 to 1 ratio. You also have a hot water tap here. This will give you clean water right from the boiler. You can use this to warm up your cups, to do tea bags, long, long black coffees, of course. I'm going to start off my scale again, so we can measure the output this time. I'm also going to time it. So, uh, we are aiming for a doubling of what we put in, in, 30, in, in 25 seconds, let's say. 25 to 30 seconds. Um, so, I'll press the button and hopefully by the end of uh, the, the, the shot, we'll get about 35 to 40 grams in 25 seconds or so. Um, these buttons are programmable. Usually from factory, the setting is a bit too long, so you'll get a bit too much coffee if you use the factory default settings. Um, I'll reprogram the double button for you so that you can get the proper amount of coffee. Uh, at least with these settings, with these beans. If you change the beans or change the settings, the button lengths will slightly change as well. So to program it, you press program, then the button you want to program. Keep an eye on the pressure gauge, you want it to be in the grey zone. It is at 1 o'clock. Looks good. Looks a bit too slow if I'm being honest. Um, I think we ground it a bit too fine, so at number 4 uh, it's flowing slowly. Uh, I'll keep it running, but yeah, we might have to increase the grind size for you, so that when you make coffee it's a bit quicker. Yeah, definitely too slow. So, uh, this is number four. I will try number six next time. We are at 45 seconds now. So, not ideal. But the pressure is looking good. Yep, I'll stop it. Yeah, yeah the, the middle position for the handle seemed to be okay. Um, just for time's sake, I'm probably not going to do another coffee. But, yeah. Um, I would, I'm going to increase the grind size for you, it's 35 grams, so I'm going to increase the grind size to number 6, and now when you receive the coffee, just use the number 6 grind size and see what happens, uh, 
I assure you that at number six it will flow quicker uh, if you use the same beans as me. Uh, but just because I have to run to work, I'm gonna leave it there. So grind size number six. And remember that once, every time you change the grind size, um, A, only change it with the grinder spinning so that you don't put any stress on the burrs, on the blades. Uh, and number two, after you change the grind size, keep the grinder running for five seconds. So the reason being is that you want to get rid of the old coffee or I guess all the old grind size that's left in, in the grinder. There's a few grams in there. So a couple seconds, five seconds of grinding will flush out the old coffee at the old grind size, if that makes sense. Uh, once that's done, take out the port filter, knock it into the knock box flush. And just the last final test, I will measure the output of water so that we can uh, we can see if the reprogramming helped. Should be about sixty to eighty grams of water. Seventy-eight grams. I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, I think uh, that's all for today. Next, no, that's all for the espresso. <laughs> Next, we will be steaming some milk. Um, so I'm just gonna wipe the dirt off, keep the machine dry. And if you're not making coffee, you don't have to lock it in all the way. Just very lightly put it in there. Um, Next, steaming, turn on the steamer, wait about 15 seconds until you start hearing the pump pulsating. In the meantime, I'm gonna get my jug. If you don't have a jug, I recommend getting a metal jug so you can feel through. Um, I think most jugs are metal anyway. Sorry, we're just getting a drink of water. Um, yeah, so once you hear the pump pulsating, that's about full pressure. Um, I've got my jug halfway filled with cold full cream milk. Turn it off, position the jug at an angle, and turn it back on. I want the milk spinning in, the, in a circle. And for the first 10 seconds, I want to keep the tip of the wand close to the surface. So that it makes this hissing noise and so this means that it's aerating the milk giving it that texture i don't want to stay there for too long so after 10 seconds i'm just going to raise the jug so we um now after raising the jug now you're just spinning the milk rather than aerating it so we don't want to aerate it for too long otherwise it'll be too bubbly too thick, and we won't be getting that nice smooth latte texture. Uh, in a cappuccino, you aerate it for a bit longer so you can get more bubbles, or more froth, I guess. And once it's too hot to the touch, turn it off. For me, usually that's about 60 or 65 degrees, and give it a purge. Give it a purge, it's very important, uh, so that you can clean the, the insides from any milk residue. Then grab a wet towel to wipe it off. Use a wet towel, otherwise, if uh, you don't wipe it straight away, it will stick in there because the wand gets really hot and the milk will just glue itself onto the metal. That is my latte. Um, yeah, I think we did okay. Um, just the grind size was a bit too fine. So, next time, like I said, just use the larger grind size of six or seven. 
so that the coffee can flow a bit quicker. Put it on, on seven for you. Um, then I'm going to do the, the milk. Once you, you're done with steaming, don't let it sit for too long. Uh, knock the jug on the counter to break any big air bubbles. Then swirl it around to mix it up and break those smaller bubbles. Latte done. If you're a barista, if you have any coffee training, I'm sure you can do latte art with this machine. I haven't, so I don't usually achieve latte art, but I think uh, it's certainly achievable with some some form of training or practice. Uh, but yeah, it looks good. Smooth milk, lots of foam, uh, at least lots of good foam. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the machine. I'm sure you can do better coffees than me. Uh, if you have any questions or issues or concerns, please don't hesitate. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you very soon. Thanks.